Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are back in Space Engineers. We're actually continuing on in the basic survival tutorial. Uh, although we're deviating just a little bit, this is more of a focused tutorial. Um, so as you saw in the title, this is nested timers uh, to depressurize a hangar bay. So this is really focused on uh, an automated type of push a button, uh, do everything in your hangar bay from a pressurized bay to non-pressurized opening the doors uh, to closing. Okay, so this is a nested timer tutorial. Now, a couple of things that we need to do to do this. Um, in this case, I've already set up the front doors here. So uh, this is continuing on with the base building, but I have not yet done the roof doors. So this is really about the roof doors. That's these guys here all set up. Um, these guys over here uh, are left to be set up. So uh, why is there why is there 12 of them? Um, well, you need six to actually do a full open close system. Now, uh, here's some prerequisites. You need a depressurization system. Now, this is an independent uh, air vent storage tank mechanism that's built into your hangar bay. Now, this is a small hangar bay here, but it could really be any size. Um, and you need three of them for the open cycle and three of them for the closed cycle. Now, uh, one of the things that's missing from this particular build, and that's kind of because I don't have any roof space. Um, because the roof is doors. Um, normally you would have things like lighting and that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm going to show you where I've kind of accounted for that, but it's not installed in this particular build. Um, so six timers, three open cycle timers, three closed cycle timers. So six total for one set of doors. Um, now, you could group everything together and have um, the roof doors and the front doors uh, opening simultaneously, and that's fine. You could do that. Um, in this case, I'm setting them up independently, um, so you could open either the upper doors uh, or the forward doors, and, and the system works the same. Uh, now, it is using... Um, it is using groups that are common, uh, which is really to say, so up here, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so it does use groups in common, which is really to say the supply air system and the depressurization system. So those are common to both. Um, so let's go ahead and demonstrate what we've got here. I've got a button bar on both ends. You can kind of see the one on that end, um, and we can see the one on this end. Now, uh, if uh, it's going to be really hard to see because this is UHD, but uh, what this says is timer block, um, front hanger open init, uh, and init is initialized. So, uh, you know, there, there's, we'll go into that. Uh, and this one says front hanger close in it. Uh, again, initialize, but it's the close cycle. So press for open, press for close. Completely automated uh, using timers. All right, so uh, what do we have here? Uh, let me go ahead and go in. That was not what, sorry. Um, all right. So uh, hard to see, but here's our six timers, and this is for the roof. Um, and what we need to name is, so let's start with open. Open initialize, we have open run, and we have open done. So initialize, start the process, run through the process, and then complete the process. And we have the same thing for the close side. So close initialize, close run, and then close done. So start the process, run through the process, and then complete the process. So six timers, three for open, three for close for every system that you want to do. Uh, sounds a little bit complicated, and kind of it is, 
but it's actually pretty straightforward. So what I want to do is bring another. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a document onto the screen here if if I can actually manage to do it. Uh, which uh, it's gonna be a little hard to see, and I do apologize for that. But what this is, uh, I I've <laughs> as I work these things up, uh, I have a file that's called Nice to Know Info, and I save all these brainstorm things. Uh, most of these I create when I'm underway, uh, when I have a little bit of time to just think about things. Um, you know, the, the goods and the bads of being underway are uh, there's sometimes a lot of time to do nothing. Uh, and that can be good or bad. Um, but there is a lot of time to think, uh, again, which can be good or bad. Uh, but there's a lot of life's distractions that aren't there. Uh, you don't really have to worry about telephone calls. Um, I, I mean, you do, but you don't. Um, you, you don't have to worry about driving to work or picking up the groceries or putting fuel in the car or anything like that. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, you know, you work within a thousand feet of your office. You, you sleep within a thousand feet of your office. So it really doesn't matter where you are on the ship. Uh, you're within walking distance of everything. So no driving, which, which is kind of nice. Uh, don't have to worry about the daily commute or anything like that. So um, when I'm sitting down uh, doing nothing and problem solving, then I come up with these things. So uh, here's what we have. Uh, hangar open initialize. Hangar open run. Uh, hangar open done. Uh, hangar close initialize. Hangar close run. And hangar close done. So these are the names and, and however you want to name these, as long as they make sense to you, I've got timer one, two, three, four, five, six over here, uh, and then I've got more the the formal names that I use. Now uh, you're going to see the time on some of these, and I've tried to note what those times really are. And you're going to have to play with these numbers. Um, this particular build that we're uh, demonstrating here uh, is different from what you see here. Um, so going through this, um, and I've marked some of these, this is the number slots. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do in this build is put these uh, functions in these slots. Uh, so even though the optional ones are not here, uh, we're going to put them in. Uh, and we're going to put them in via a blank. Uh, so we're not really putting them in, but we're putting them in. That way, if later on you come back and you look at this build and say, oh, you know what, I want to ch make some changes here, then it's already ready to go. Um, so um, let's go through this real quick, and then I want to briefly go through and show you the depressurization system as well as the pressurization system and kind of describe what we've done there and why it's important to set up the groups because this is very dependent upon groups um, to make it all work. So let me go through this real quick. So uh, close group hangar access doors. So if you have doors which go into uh, your hangar bay, whether they come in from the outside or, or from an interior space, we can actually close all of those doors. Now, in, this, in the case of this particular base, I do have a global group for my sliding doors. Uh, this base is entirely vanilla, uh, so I'm using sliding doors to, to do... Uh, to control access, uh, all in a in a airlock type format, an outer door and inner door. Um, so I could use that particular group. Now that group is global; it covers everything, not just what's coming into the hangar bay. But you could set up a group that's just about doors going to the hangar bay. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have a global group that is all of the access doors, uh, including those in the living space, those going outside uh, on the other side. So we could trigger the door close uh, to do that. But optional, uh, close group hangar access doors. So we have a group that's about those hangar access doors. We trigger it to close. Okay, so group close. Um, off group hanger normal lights. So my normal lighting, I have a group, and I turn that group off. So shut down the lights, the main normal lights. Uh, on group hanger warning lights and alarms. If there are warning lights and alarms, then this is the group that you turn on here. Uh, we turn off group air vents supply. 
And what I mean by supply is these are your main supply air vents. So we have a group that's set up that is the air vents within the hangar bay itself that normally control the pressurization. So these are your normal supply air vents. And we're going to turn them off. And the reason we turn them off is because when I evacuate the air out of there, I don't want those to continue feeding. Uh, so uh, technically the game does not do that. It detects, oh, there's a breach, so turn off. Um, but in this case, we're doing it kind of the logical proper way and turning those off. That way they're not involved at all. Depressurize on. Uh, the group air vents depressurize. So we have a uh, depressurize system and we're going to set those air vents to depressurize on and, and we'll show you that. Uh, start the timer uh, hanger open run. Okay, So this basically triggers the next timer which is one of the reasons we call this a nested timer system. Uh, so one timer does what it does, then calls the next timer, which does what it does, calls the next timer. Now, if you're not familiar with how timers work, timers are basically a delay execute systematic function. And what I mean by that is you set a timer to a particular time. It's going to tick through that time after it has started and then execute which is to say, do what you told it to do on the bar. And we will get into that. So uh, start the next timer, which is really to say, trigger the next timer. Actually, not trigger, but start the next timer because there's a time. Now, in the case of the initialize, and this is both for the open and close, we set it to the lowest setting, which is one second. So when we trigger it, there's a one second delay before it actually does what you told it to do. And that's because our lowest setting is a second. We can't actually go to zero an instant trigger. Uh, well, actually we can. If you set up to trigger, then it bypasses the timer, goes right to the execute. So you could technically go to trigger as a start and avoid this one second. Uh, one second of your life that you'll never get back. I apologize for that, but hey. So however you want to set it up. You can do it with a trigger or start. But a timer can go down to one second is, is the lowest it goes. Okay, number two. Uh, hanger run. What does this really do? So the concept here, now this is 18 seconds. Delay to depressurize is what I've said here. So the delay here in this case is to accomplish the depressurization. In the case of this particular build, um, there are a bazillion air vents that, that depressurize. So it depressurizes, this is a reasonably small hanger, so it depressurizes very fast. It's like five or six seconds. Um, depending on the size of your hanger bay, depending on how many air vents you're using to do the depressurization, is really becomes a function of time. Um, so in this example that I have on the screen here, it was timed out to 18 seconds. Where did I come up with 18 seconds? Well, I timed it. <laughs> so in the build that I was doing when I actually designed this particular thing, the, that particular build, it was a very large hangar bay. Um, and there was probably, um, it was 16, probably eight on each side, um, air vents, and it took... Uh, 18 seconds to actually depressurize the bay. So really that's what this timer is doing. So you trigger it, the depressurization starts. That happens in the initialization process. So lights go out, warning lights come on, and depressurization starts. That's the initialization. That's how we start this whole process. Um, the run is we want to wait for the depressurization to happen. So we want to give the depressurization system the time to do this. Then, as you see in number one there, open group hanger doors. Okay. So whatever you have called that group, hanger doors, uh, we are going to trigger an open on those, on those doors. So we're using groups here, but group open. Uh, don't select toggle 
um, because it, it could have some interesting results. You want to force it to do exactly what you want it to do. And in this case, open. Uh, and again, nested timers, we are triggering the hanger open done timer. So, uh, and the third timer there, hanger open done. Uh, we wait 15 seconds. Why are we waiting 15 seconds? And in the parenthesis there is delay to open doors. Uh, doors do take a certain amount of time to open. Uh, whether you're using uh, a particular type of door, uh, in this case, uh, I was using Shadow Flux's uh, large doors, which are a 3x3 three three door, awesome door. Um, and uh, they took about 15 seconds to fully open. Um, so the idea here was wait until these are fully open and then do what we do. And what do we need to do to really stop? Well, turn off the damn alarms, right? So turn off the warning systems, the, the lights, the floods, or whatever it is uh, that you're using as a warning. So turn off the warning lights and alarms, then turn on the group hangar lights, uh, whether those be flood lights, normal lights, whatever, but normal lights. So we turn them off with the initialization, we turn them back on when we're done. Okay, so it's all in here, even if you don't have lights or warning lights or alarms, it's all here referenced in case you need it. Uh, on the close cycle, it's kind of the same thing in reverse. Okay, so we have the flood lights, turn them off, turn on the warning lights, those are both optional, of course. We start the hangar doors closing. Okay, and again, this one's set up to one second, the lowest possible time. You could also, on the button bar, uh, trigger, which would eliminate that one second entirely. But hey, one second, not a, not a bad thing. So set the hanger doors to close. You're using your group and you set it to close. Don't use toggle, use close. That way, if you accidentally open it up somewhere, then this would be all screwed up for you. So force it closed. Uh, that is an option and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, start timer, obviously hanger, uh, uh, nested timers here. So start timer hanger close run, okay, which is timer number five or however you want to name them. Hanger close run. We have a 15 second delay. Hey, that should look familiar. Delay to open doors, which is magically the same as delay to close doors. So this is just the opposite. So what are we doing here? We're waiting for those doors to close, which was triggered in the initialize. And after that 15 seconds has expired, we want to turn depressurization off. What does depressurization off really mean in terms of game? It means repressurize. So we're actually using the same depressurization system, that group that we set up to depressurize your hangar bay, but we are depressurize off, which now will use the air stored in those tanks, those, those independent tanks, to refill uh, the bay. So we have evacuated on the open cycle. Now we will repressurize using that same evacuated air. So depressurize off. Uh, start timer, hangar bay, close, done. Okay. So we wait 18 seconds. Now, why did I wait 18 seconds? Well, if you look back up there at timer two, it took 18 seconds to depressurize, which means it takes about mystically, magically 18 seconds to repressurize. Okay, the space is the same size. We have the same number of air vents. So if it takes 18 seconds to depressurize, probably gonna take about 18 seconds to repressurize. Okay, so this is fully dependent. Those two are mirrors of each other, just like the 15 seconds is mirror to each other. Um, so plan accordingly. If you figure out, you only have to time it once. Open cycle is about the same as the closed cycle. So once you figure out how long it takes those damn doors to open, then that's probably going to work on the close cycle as well. So 15 seconds is what I found the doors to open and close. In the case of that particular build where I did the timing for this, it took about 18 seconds. This build is far, far less than that. So uh, run hanger close or hanger close done. 18 seconds delay. Did I go through the... Uh, Yep, depressurize off, start the timer. So 18 seconds to repressurize. And we want to, after that 18 seconds transpires, the 
bay should be repressurized so we turn the group air supply vents back on okay we turned them off with timer number one when we opened the doors so now that they're closed the space is repressurized so we want to turn those supply air vents on realistically they should do absolutely nothing so we should have put the bay back to a pressurized state but in case that didn't happen or in case somebody left an airlock door open then we got it covered so it can draw in new air if it needs it um, and then we go to these optional ones we turn off the warning lights and alarms that's always a good thing you don't want to leave those running we turn on the normal lights and then we're going to open reopen and this is again optional the access doors to the hangar so if you have a group set up specifically that that normally remain open when the hangar is closed then that's where you can do that so that's our six timers so uh, now that we've really babbled about how to do this let's go ahead and demonstrate how to do this we'll actually program these things in so we want to start out with uh, actually let me uh, let me show you whoops uh, let me get back into the game let's go ahead and look at some of the group systems here um, the first thing is the supply air system which is this right here there's one on each side so there's a four vent here and then there's a four vent over here uh, this is just uh, it looks a little bit silly but what it does is the air or rather the conveyor system comes from back here in the utility area uh, across it comes down and then back up now why did I go down and back up because I wanted a big window there so uh, kind of silly to uh, add all those but that we have a bunch of conveyors here which uh, which really just gave me a place to add on the air vents okay so these air vents are supply vents that are plumbed into the system they're always active right so they are designed and intended to uh, to supply air to this space so they are part of the the normal supply system they're interconnected to the uh, to the base wide conveyor system to uh, to supply air all right so one uh, one set on each side eight total um, these bazillion air vents going across here a little hard to see and we will go into the next room over but this is basically air vents attached onto a bunch of conveyors attached onto a bunch of tanks okay what is unique about these they are completely independent they do not interconnect into the base conveyor system so let's go have a look at that let's go in here so open doors okay, responsible space engineer so as you can see these do not connect to anything it is just a bunch of tanks attached on to a bunch of air vents so what happens when the depressurization is triggered then it starts pulling in the air it stores the air in these tanks and then stops once the uh, depressurization is complete obviously there's nothing else to do when we repressurize it pulls the air out of these tanks puts it back into the space where the air vents are so completely independent system now we talked about groups how did we do the groups well your air vents are actually the only active thing here you can't really tell an, a tank to do anything other than uh, refill bottles um, in this case we don't really uh, have any need for that particular function so we have a group that includes all of these air vents and we called that the air vent depressurization system so let's go back outside uh, which is really to say the uh, the hangar bay and then we'll uh, we'll get into the building the, uh, the configuration so our two groups that we are worried about for the air system are the depressurization system which is all this so all of these air vents are in a group and then all of the supply vents here are in a group um, the third group that you absolutely have to have configured uh, are the doors themselves so the hangar bay doors themselves which 
is really to say the doors that you want to trigger to open. Now, uh, we went over those optional things such as the lighting, uh, such as the warning lights and alarms, and you can set those up pretty easy. Uh, they, they actually have all, there's lights uh, in the vanilla game. Uh, there's also speakers in the vanilla game with alarms. So you can, uh, you can have an awful lot of fun uh, with all that. So uh, let's get to a control panel. And uh, for the sake of convenience, we're going to come down here and use one of these control panels. So uh, what I did was number these one through six uh, coming towards the center. So this is, uh, this is the number one. So this will be the open uh, initialize. So I'm going to do a K to get into this so we can actually see what it is. So you see roof hanger. In this case, it's the roof hanger portion uh, because we already configured the, uh, uh, the other portion. And uh, so we've named all six of our timers already. Okay, so that's the only thing I've done ahead of time. You can see it's, this is still set to, uh, to delay. Um, so delay of one. Uh, one of the things I want to do here uh, front, I'm going to set these to silent. Uh, I'm going to set those to silent as well because ugh, they make noise. All right, so uh, open initialize. What do we need to do to initialize everything? So once we have it named, We've got our timer set to one second because that's the lowest we can go. We're going to do a setup actions. This is going to be a familiar bar, so you have your toolbar here. <coughs> now, uh, you can run, uh, obviously, an awful lot of functions here. Uh, so if you really want to set up this many functions, you can set up uh, 99 functions, it looks like. So definitely a whole lot of functions here. In this case, we don't need to set up that many. So we had three optional items here. So close the hangar access doors. Um, I actually have a group that's my sliding doors, which is this guy. So doors sliding. So we could actually trigger that. So remember, we do not want to use the toggle. We always want to physically do something. And in this case, it's close the doors. Okay, so regardless of what state they're in, every door in that group is going to be issued the command close. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Physically close it. Don't use the toggle. Okay, uh, we turn off the hangar bay lights. Uh, in this case, I don't have any because I don't have any roof. Uh, we turn on the warning lights and warning alarms. So that would be a group that we can trigger uh, or string them all out however you want so in the fourth slot here we turn off the air vents for this particular group now I've got a couple uh, air vents so we just have a global air vent which is all the other air vents inside the base okay so I've created a group for those we have our depressurized vents that I told you about and then we have the air vents specifically these are the hangar bay supply so this is the ones that actually we want to turn those off Okay, so right now they're supplying air to the hangar bay. Uh, we want to stop it from supplying anything else because we're going to depressurize. So this is the first stage is to turn these guys off. And again, you don't want to use a toggle. You want to physically turn it off. So toggle block off. So we issue all the commands. Now, they happen to be on, which is, which is true. All right, uh, number five is depressurization on. So depressurization, here's our air vents depressurize. So that's our depressurization system there. It's a group, so all those guys are together. Again, do not use the toggle. It may do things that you weren't expecting. We're going to turn the depressurization on. So in other words, depressurize the space. All right, then uh, the sixth function here is trigger the next timer. Okay, so we have to go back into all blocks here. And uh, we have six timers, which are the opens and the closes. And in this case, so we're in open initialize now, we want to trigger the open run, which is here. And we can either trigger now, completely bypass, but the problem with that is we need that timer. That's why we're using timers. So in this case, we want to do a start. 
and you'll see the timer show up and you can see the caption there timer block uh, hanger open run start all right um, we're gonna do an escape which will put us back out to our main area one of the things I want to do real quick because I already configured these uh, turn these guys on uh, we're gonna scroll back to the bottom I want to see what I actually did here so open run uh, was a 10 second okay so this depressurization system actually depressurizes really really quickly uh, so this actually will depressurize and then sit there for about four seconds five seconds uh, before it goes on so I just wanted to check those numbers uh, to see what uh, what those numbers were so back uh, back into the drill here so uh, open timer run okay open run timer uh, it's already set at 10 seconds which is good and we open the hangar door so we have paused for 10 seconds so the bay can depressurize so that's what the pause is and we go into groups and in this case it's our roof doors which is this one here so we are going to group and we're going to trigger an open again do not use your toggle because you may have opened this inadvertently directly so if you say toggle and you think it's closed but it's actually open then using the toggle will actually close them even though you're wanting them to open so always use the straightforward command the, the actual do this you know not decide based on your state open um, all right uh, the next function here is to start the uh, the open done timer all right so open done should be this one here open done and again we drag this into the second slot because that's what it is we are needing the timer so don't do a trigger now we do a start start okay so open the doors how long do the doors take the answer to that question becomes your timer for the next set so escape to get back out to the uh, menu here we're doing open done and in this case we're back to that 15 seconds because these doors actually take about 15 seconds to open so 15 seconds to delay which is the length of time it takes for the door to open all right what do we need to do here now in this case because it was about uh, turning back on the lights and turning off the warning alarms and lights we're actually doing nothing here okay so it's fully open I have no lights to turn back on I have no alarms to turn off so in this case this particular timer is blank don't actually need it in this case but sticking with the design so you have the complete flexibility to do pretty much whatever you want so whatever functions if you have alarms then you're already set up to do it so uh, using the system gives you the most flexibility using the three timers on three timers off all right so in this case we have nothing here so we're already configured the timer is going to execute exactly as we told it to do it's going to wait those 15 seconds and then do nothing <laughs> so execute terminate do nothing so in this particular case we're not doing anything so uh, escape uh, the next one we're going to do is the close initialize now remember the initialize are one second because that's the, the least we, we can do uh, we're going to do the setup actions and what's the first thing we need to do on the close initialize well we need to turn off the lights okay the main hanger lights we need to turn on the warning alarms which in this case we don't have any so there's slot two so slot three the first thing we do is actually close the damn doors so groups we're looking for roof which is this one here into slot three because we're leaving those first two slots for the lights in case we uh, we do that and in this case it's a close we want to command all those doors to close again do not use toggle it might get you in trouble so we want to close the doors so trigger it to to go closed okay uh, slot number four is actually start the next timer nested timer right so we escape we go into the next timer which is the run so close run is the one we want 
and uh, this is about the delay for the doors closing so this is the same as we had before which is that 15 seconds for those doors to close so wait 15 seconds for the doors to close and then proceed on with our configuration our action so in this case close run we wait 15 seconds for the doors to close we want to turn the depressurization system off okay sounds silly but depressurization off equals repressurize okay so think about it in terms of what it's actually doing if we're not depressurizing then we are repressurizing right so this goes into slot number one actually yeah just had to had to make sure i'm looking okay so Remember, depressurize on, depressurize off. Try and avoid those toggles because, again, they might do something that you're not expecting. If you have this thing out of order or did anything out of order, oops did, then it will totally mess you up. So make sure you use the command that you are intending. And in this case, we want to turn the depressurization system off, which is also known as repressurize the damn space. So depressurization off. All right. Our next function here is to start the next timer. Okay, so we've waited that 15 seconds for the doors to close. Then we trigger our depressurization off to repressurization to repressurize the bay. Then we go back into our timers, uh, which is in all blocks. We are looking for uh, close done, which is here, and trigger that last timer so start okay remember trigger now uh, goes bypasses the timer just goes right straight to the execute uh, so start because we are using a timer as a timing device all right uh, escape to get back out to the main control panel select this last one which is close done um, we are depressurizing uh, or rather repressurizing, which takes about the same amount of time as uh, depressurizing. So in this case, it took us about five to six seconds, but 10 is plenty. Uh, so it's already set up as 10 because that's default on the timers. We do a setup of the actions. We're going to turn on, this is really all we're gonna do here. We're gonna turn on these hangar bay air vents. So remember in the open initialize we turn them off so in the close done which is the finalization of closing we want to turn these guys back on pretty straightforward so once we turn these guys on which is really to say toggle block on I'm gonna repeat the don't use the toggles <laughs> so always command it to do what you are intending for it to do um, and then we have the optionals so Turn off the blaring alarms. Pretty good idea. Turn on the normal lights, and in this case, open the doors. Now, I don't have a group, uh, so if I did the, uh, rather I don't have a group specific to the hangar bay doors, I have a group that's everything. So in this case, I would be opening all of those doors. Don't wanna do that because they're airlocks, <laughs> so. Uh, repressurize the hangar bay only to open the doors and let all the air out so normally if you have dedicated doors that's where this particular group would be so these are like your internal doors that go into the interior of your base so all right so that is effectively uh, what we have so the only other thing we need to do so everything should be at this point configured so uh, what I have in this case, obviously these button bars are reversed from one another. Sorry about the sun in your eyes there. So the front ones, or the ones closest to the front doors, uh, are being used for the front uh, open and close. And in this case, the one closest to the door is the open, and uh, the one next to it is the close. And we're going to follow suit on this. To program the button bars is select one of the buttons and press K. Okay, so it's just like a control panel, except rather than going into the control panel, uh, it goes into the button configuration. 
What do we want to do? Well, we are going to trigger, which is these initialization. So in this case, uh, close init, which is going to go here. Okay, so we're we're following the same thing, which is a start, uh, and the open init, uh, which will start. Okay, so the idea this is the front doors, so front hanger open initialize, front hanger close initialize, and this is the roof ones, which is roof hanger open initialize, and roof hanger close initialize. So all we do is copy the initialize blocks in put it on the button bar and then that becomes your trigger for actually starting all right and we'll test this in just a moment but now we have all of our buttons configured here so this is a four button vanilla uh, button bar here and again the open initialize for the front doors which are these here and the close and then the open initialize for the roof doors up yonder and the close so we're going to configure the button bar on this side exactly the same way, uh, which is to say the mirror. And again, so this is button one versus button four on the other side because it's reversed. So again, open initialize, close initialize for the fronts. So um, again, if I go into here and press K, I'm going to go into the control panel. If I press a button, uh, highlight a button, and press K, I'm gonna go into the button bar uh, configuration. So, uh, we're talking about roof. So, roof close initialize, which is actually gonna be on, in this case, button four, and we're starting. And the open initialize in button three, which is starting. All right, so let's, uh, let's have a good time here and test this out. So we want to see what's gonna happen. So if we've configured all of this correctly, all I have to do is press this button and everything is gonna happen. So here's a T, which will initialize. What we wanna see is those guys went off, these guys went into depressurized mode, and very shortly here, we should see the roof start to open. There it is. And we're open. And you can see oxygen none on the screen there. All right. Uh, and just for fun, we'll go to the other button and do the close, which is this uh, button over here. So you see close, initialize, start. Here's a T. And then we're going to watch what happens. So as you can see, the doors are closing. You can see the front doors are not moving. After a few seconds, we should see that go blue or cayenne, which it did. And then it should, when it triggers, start refilling the space. That's not my problem. Because it's not depressurizing unless I clicked it wrong. Well, we might have uh, might have messed something up because. Uh, that last timer is not triggering either because that should turn these back on. All right, well, uh, it's always fun to see when something breaks and we have to figure out what happened, right? All right, so somewhere in the run timer is where it looks like we had an issue. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and look. Our open mechanism seemed to have worked fine. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, close silent delay of one second. Let's check our setups. Oh, that's what, it, that's why. So we Energy close the doors low. and I forgot to put the timer in there. So uh, the close run timer is the one we're looking at. There it is, close run. And we do a start. Uh, 
So just for fun, let's look at the close run, make sure we got that. So 15 seconds delay for the door to close, the doors to close. Uh, we are repressurizing. Okay, so this never happened. <laughs> Depressurize off. You can see by the little icon that it's turning them off. Then uh, start to the next timer, uh, which is which is there. And then uh, close done. We wait 10 seconds because that should be the amount of time it takes to uh, to repressurize and start the actions. In this case, all we're doing is turning the hangar bay vents back on. So it's an on icon here. Uh, we would turn off the alarms and warning lights and turn on the hangar bay lights. So if we had those, those functions and groups set up, uh, then everything would be good. All right, so uh, let's go back out. We'll retest. So we're gonna initialize the open get us back to the state that we knew everything was working. So uh, these guys off, uh, these guys will depressurize, which they're kind of in a depressurized mode already. And uh, then we open the doors. So we know the open section actually works as intended, which is a good thing. So at least I didn't screw up everything. Okay, so all the way open, you can see oxygen none. And let's trigger the close for take two. So there's a T. So we should see the doors closing, which they are. So you see the yellow, uh, which says we are open to the atmosphere. Uh, we go to the Cayenne because we're in depressurized mode. Okay, we just went green. We are repressurizing the space. In 10 seconds, we should re-trigger, look to the right side and you see the air vents came back on all right so there is a nested timer system which will allow you to uh, basically single click and carry out the functions of depressurizing your bay uh, turning off air vents depressurizing and opening the bay doors so that is pretty much the tutorial so uh, it sounds a bit complicated but as long as you have kind of a list, a guideline as to how to do it, then it makes it kind of easy. So, I think, I think, hopefully that gives you uh, fuel for thought. Uh, obviously, you can adapt this system to pretty much any uh, build that, that you have that, uh, that does all of these same functions. The functions are the same. It really doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, as long as you have your hangar doors, as long as you have a depressurization system, as long as you have a repressurization system, uh, that main supply, uh, then all of these functions will work. And they're uh, built in to do lighting and alarms and everything already made for you. So with that having been said, this is Kenty Tiger signing off. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.